Hello dear children and welcome all of you to the class of science. We have started with chapter number 14 chemical effect of electric current and in our live sessions we studied that not only solids but even some liquids also conducts electricity. It's not that all liquid conduct electricity. There are some liquids which are regarded as good conductor of electricity where are some other liquids are considered as poor conductor of electricity. If we take the solution of acid, bases or salt, such solutions conducts electricity. Acids and bases are the chemical substances that dissociate to form ions when they dissolve in solution. They are good conductor of electricity because of the presence of the ions into the solution. If I take water and add a pinch of salt into the water, this solution also conduct electricity as it releases positively or negatively charged, positively and negatively charged ions into the solution. Children, the name of the chapter is chemical effect of electric current and we know that when electric current passes through the solution it breaks down into ions. This is because the chemical reaction takes place when an electric current passes through the solution. Depending upon the nature of the solution and the electrodes used the following effects can be observed into the solution. The effects are we can observe that the metallic deposit is seen on the electrode. We can also observe the change in color into the solution and also release of gas or production of bubbles in the solution. All the three cases we have already discussed in our live session. For this chemical effect of electric current, we need an arrangement or we need an assembly and that assembly is called as electrolytic cell. Let's understand the components of the electrolytic cell. So an electrolytic cell consists of a beaker containing a solution and the two rods are placed into it. The rods are connected with the connecting wire and the circuit is completed by connecting battery to the two free ends of the wire. These two rods are called as electrodes and an electrode is a conductor of electricity through which an electric current leaves or enter into the substance. This thing which you can observe over here is an electrolyte and an electrolyte is a solution that breaks into ions when we pass electric current through this solution. Then this particular electrode which is connected to negative terminal of the battery, this electrode is called as cathode and the electrode which is connected to the positive terminal of the battery is called as an anode. Also when we pass electric current through the solution it gets dissociated into positively charged and negatively charged ions and an anion is negatively charged ion and, and, and a cation is a positively charged ion. Alright, so this assembly is an electrolytic cell. If you are asked what is an electrolytic cell, so your answer will be an electrolytic cell is the one which consists of electrodes, electrolyte, a cell or a battery and a bulb. Now the application of chemical effect of electric current is electroplating. And electroplating is a process in which a layer of metal is deposited on another material with the help of electricity. So we will be making use of an electrolytic cell for the process of electroplating. Now this process of electroplating is used in many industries
for depositing a layer of metal with desired characteristics on another metal different metals which we can use for electroplating are nickel copper gold silver tin brass zinc chromium and platinum now let's understand the process of electroplating in detail in order to conduct electroplating the very very important thing is that right electrodes and electrolyte must be chosen so that the metal can deposit over a material for example if we want to deposit say copper metal on some material so what we'll need we will need an electrolyte that contain copper in it similarly if we need gold on the material we need an electrolyte that contains gold in it so whichever metal you have to coat on the material or you have to plate on the material that metal should be present into the electrolyte also we should make sure that the electrode that we are using for the process of electroplating is completely clean the electrode used are made up of different material one of the electrode is of the same metal of which the electrolyte solution is for example my electrolyte is copper sulfate then one of the electrode has to be copper all right suppose say my electrolyte is silver nitrate then in this case one of the electrode has to be of silver in case we want to plate say copper upon brass all right so in this case one electrode should be copper other electrode should be brass and the electrolyte must be the salt which should have copper in it so i can make use of copper sulfate as my electrolyte so whichever substance you have to coat on the other substance or you have to plate on the other substance the electrolyte should have that particular substance into it this is very very important in case of electroplating now let's consider the diagram which is shown here on the slide that describes the process of electroplating of copper so what we are doing we are doing electroplating of copper on brass so i should have two electrodes one should be copper and one should be brass all right so i must say that out of the two electrodes the copper electrode acts as anode that is the positive electrode and the brass electrode acts as cathode that is the negative electrode so just see over here this is copper electrode acting as the positive electrode and the brass electrode acts as the negative electrode which is connected to negative terminal of the battery now when we pass electricity through the solution and which electrolyte we will take here we can take the electrolyte as copper sulfate because our one electrode is copper and we have to you know do the coating of copper on the brass so electrolyte should have copper into it so we are taking the electrolyte as copper sulfate so when we pass electricity through this electrolyte the copper sulfate breaks into its ions so copper sulfate breaks into copper ion and sulfate ion so you can just see here copper ions and sulfate ions the copper ions they are positively charged ions they get attracted towards the brass electrode all right positively charged particles gets attracted towards the negative copper is positive hence it gets attracted towards the brass so copper ions starts depositing on the brass and that is how we are giving a coat of copper on the brass all right 
so i can just say that the copper ions gets attracted by the brass electrode while the sulfate ions being negatively charged they move towards the copper electrode all right as a result of this the copper starts depositing on the brass electrode and that is what is our intention we are coating the brass electrode with the copper the process of electroplating it takes some time to complete it's not an instantaneous process the amount of time that it will take it depends upon the strength of the current that is passed through the circuit strength of the current means what how much current we are passing through the circuit and also upon the concentration of the electrolyte how strong the electrolyte is on these two factors the speed of the electroplating depends as these two are increased the speed of electroplating also increases so more the current more faster will be the process of electroplating and higher the concentration of the electrolyte faster will be the process of electroplating now what are the applications of electroplating medical equipments are made up of nickel which is harmful to our body and therefore to avoid it from coming in contact with our body a coating of platinum or gold is applied on the surface of nickel so the medical equipments are coated with nickel just have a look at this also you must be aware of the braces which you can see some of the braces are gold plated some are nickel plated all right next application is our kitchen appliances or kitchen equipments bath taps parts of the cars etc these are coated with chromium coating and chromium is very expensive metal and therefore the objects are coated with cheaper metal and chromium coating is provided thus to bring a shining over the objects and prevent them from corrosion chromium coating is used so have a look at this these are the uh, bath taps parts of automobile or car and kitchen utensils which is given the coating of chromium so as to prevent it from corrosion all right next application is jewelry makers they often make ornaments of less expensive metals and provide a coating of gold or silver upon it so we usually call gold plated silver plated ornaments and they look like this it looks like it is real gold but it is not real gold it is just a coating of gold either on brass or on silver so this is the artificial jewelry you can see next is a tin can are used to store food they are actually made up of iron and have a coating of tin on them iron can easily react with food and spoil it however tin prevents the food from getting reacted with iron and therefore helps in preventing it from getting spoiled easily so it looks like this these are the uh, tin cans next application is the bridges and various parts of automobiles are made up of iron and because they provide strength however in order to prevent iron from getting rusted a coating of zinc is provided over it and this method is called as galvanization so a coating of zinc on iron article is done so as to prevent it from getting rusted and provide more strength so these are the parts of you know automobiles uh, which are coated with um, you know zinc and bridges which are also coated with zinc so children this is all about electroplating and the application of electroplating i hope you all understood this process in detail so please go through the video once again and see you all in the next video lesson until then bye and take care